believe I will continue to take pride in fulfilling my duties. Mind your fate. Royal decree. As you wish, main foil. Don't be nervous.
Ignite Phantasmagoria.
Water comes in many flavors to the discerning palate. Monstat's water is crisp. Do you believe that this warning letter was sent by the Phantom Weasel? Absolutely! I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Phantom Weasel never acts as you expect. He must have faked his own death ten years ago using a body double. Now that he's back, I'm sure the guards who worked on his case back in the day are in for a headache, but... However this turns out in the end, the one thing it won't be is boring. Couldn't agree more! As a journalist, I'm gonna get a lot of mileage out of this one! Thank you, sir, for your time. Now, whom should I interview next? Oh, 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 hey! What a coincidence! Fancy meeting you here! Perfect timing. So, the Phantom Weasel's latest warning letter. What are your thoughts? Yeah, this is the first time we're hearing of this one. Could you call us in? Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, this case is from a decade ago. I guess you wouldn't know about it. Well, not to worry. You're in good hands because I'm a professional. The story goes like this. Ten or so years ago, a phantom thief became active in the court of Fontaine. Known only as the Weasel. Nobody knew his true identity, and the authorities never managed to catch him. Wow, cool! He sounds like one of those mysterious night burglars that you read about in novels. Precisely. Well, except the part where they actually have a good reputation. Our weasel targeted whatever people held dear, and no one was safe from his predations. He would just as soon steal a necklace from a rich merchant's safe as he would a toy doll given to a commoner child for their birthday. I know. The phantom thieves you read about in novels rob the rich to pay the poor, but this guy did not discriminate. Unsurprisingly, this didn't work wonders for his public reputation. Every man and his dog wanted to see him behind bars. Yeesh. So, uh, did they catch him? Um, not exactly. There's a good chance that the weasel would still be at large to this day if it hadn't been for an accident ten years ago. A magician named Caesar fell to his death in a botched high-altitude escape performance. When the police went through his personal effects, they found a hoard of stolen loot and gadgets used for criminal activities. And that was how the Phantom Weasel's identity was revealed to all. Sure enough, thefts in Fontaine went down after Caesar's death. But today, ten years on, the notorious thief has once again issued one of his warning letters and pasted it on the gate of the Opera Epicles for all to see. I had to squeeze through the crowd this morning to get a photo as soon as I heard. Here, it's this one. Hmm. 
So, this is the warning letter, huh? Let's see what he wrote. Three days from now, when evening falls, I shall take from you that which you hold most dear at the Opera House. Just as you did to me ten years ago. This is, without a doubt, a clear declaration of criminal intent. After years of laying low, the Phantom Weasel is back with a vengeance. What once seemed like an open and shut case has been blown wide open again. But why has he re-emerged now? And what does he want? I sense an epic scoop. And I'm going for it. Uh-oh. If this thief will steal anything that other people value, does that mean even we might be targeted? Really? Oh, let him try! In fact, I'm just gonna eat all our snacks right now! Let's see what he can do about that! Okay, the people have spoken. It's clear that the public are very concerned about the Phantom Weasel's reappearance. Let's see, I've got a photo of the letter, my interview notes. Yep, that should be enough to form the skeleton of my article. It does feel like something is missing, though. Something exclusive. Who should I interview next? I need someone with a more concrete connection to the weasel. Hmm. <gasps> is that who I think it is? Really? Magic, magician, Caesar, <gasps> the Phantom Weasel. That's it. Let's go interview Lenny. You see, the original Phantom Thief Caesar was a magician too. And what do Phantom Thieves and magicians have in common? They both have an air of mystery about them. Perhaps there's a connection there. Are you serious? What sort of a deduction is that? Oh, relax. My journalistic instinct tells me that an exclusive news story is beckoning. Let's go. No time for delay. Wow, Mr. Magician! How did you know which card I picked? Oh, it's simple. Come closer, and I'll let you in on my secret. Magicians have a special skill called telepathy, which means we can read other people's minds. Really? Then, what am I thinking now? Well, first you need to relax. Because I can see that you're clenching your fist in your mind, as if to say, no, I mustn't let him guess it. Aww. And now you're getting a little flustered. You're trying to find a way to empty your mind, to think of nothing at all. But the more you try to hide a secret, the easier it'll come out. You snuck out from home today, didn't you? You told your family a little lie so you could come out and play. Now, now, that's not a good habit. Y you can tell? Uh, oh, boy. You really can read my mind. Of course. Oh, and that's the end of my performance. You should really be heading home. Remember to apologize to your family, all right? They must be worried about you. Uh, all right. Got it. Bye, Mr. Magician. Why, hello. We meet again. Are you looking for me? What's the situation? Well, why don't you guess, Mr. Telepathic? Oh, please. You didn't believe that spiel, did you? The power of telepathy is quite beyond me. I'm sure that child would beg to differ. Seemed like you were right on the money. That was nothing more than a little trickery. I made an educated guess based on his micro-expressions. 
That, plus the fact that he was the only kid here without his parents, and he looked as guilty as sin. He made it easy for me. You guys, on the other hand... Hmm... Let me guess. Uh, don't tell me you're here for the Phantom Weasel, are you? Wow! Cut it in one! Is this more of your trickery, Edward? Wait, really? <laughs> no, no trickery this time. It was pure luck. His warning letter's been the talk of the town, so I figured that maybe you were asking around about that. Bingo! I plan on writing a column reporting on the latest news about the Phantom Weasel. So, Lenny, what are your thoughts on this infamous thief's reappearance? Hmm... To be honest... It makes me angry. Angry? Why? You read his letter, right? The Phantom Weasel claims he's planning something in three nights' time at the Opera House. That's the night I'll be performing there. Huh. What are the chances? <gasps> Wait a minute! You don't think he's after you, do you? Well, if he is, then his warning is clearly a direct challenge to me personally. And if he's not... Then it's still going to be a huge headache for me. The mere mention of the weasel's name is enough to scare people off. So once the contents of that letter get out, barely anyone will be showing up to watch my show. But I've been preparing for this for a long time. I'm not about to let him ruin my big day. This leaves me with only one choice. I have to expose the phantom weasel's identity before the show begins. Really? So what you're saying is... We might get to see a live duel between a famous magician and an infamous thief? Wow, this has exclusive written all over it! To be honest, I'm not sure if I'll emerge the victor. The Phantom Weasel is a notorious crook, infamous for his inscrutable methods. You're being far too modest, Linny! I think your magic tricks are even more inscrutable than those of a thief! Thanks for the compliment, though I have to say, I don't care much for the comparison. A lot of people liken magicians to thieves because we both have the ability to make things disappear without the person noticing. But there's an important difference that these people overlook. Allow me to demonstrate with a quick magic trick. Here, I have a flower, just an ordinary flower that was picked not long ago. Watch it carefully now. Three, two, one. That's the question. Where did it go? Therein lies the difference between us. Thieves make precious things disappear, but only magicians make them reappear. If I could now invite you all to check your clothes, there might be a surprise in there somewhere. A surprise? Outstanding trick! Sorry, Lenny, it seems that my previous praise was woefully inadequate. Clearly, magic is the superior art form to theft. Don't worry, I didn't take offense. I just wanted to take the opportunity to perhaps change some of the preconceived notions you might have about magicians. Since Caesar's death, a lot of people associate magicians with criminality. It can be quite frustrating. I can imagine. Um, coming back to your trick just now, might I presume that you are well-versed in floral symbolism? For example, magicians often use rainbow roses in their flower-related performances to represent passion and romantic encounters. But you used a loony-do spell, which, if I'm not mistaken, allude to separations. I'm curious to know if there was any deeper meaning behind this choice? Impressive knowledge. It's no wonder you're such a successful journalist. But I'm afraid I don't know the first thing about floral symbolism. I'm just in the habit of using Lumidu spells in my magic. It sounds like something I should look into, though. Hmm. 
I'll buy myself a copy of Fontaine's Floral Language Facts when I have some time. But it'll have to wait until this Phantom Weasel business is behind us. Well noted. In that case, this brings us to the end of our interview. I, for one, am looking forward to the final showdown between you and the thief. Please feel free to get in touch to update me on any further developments. Otherwise, I will of course see you at your show in three days' time. But let's hope the Phantom Weasel is caught by then. If there's nothing else, uh, I'll be off. You've given me lots to work with here, and I've got no time to lose if I want to write that exclusive piece. I'll see you all later. So, Nanny, are you going to tell us how you did that flower trick now? <laughs> I'm afraid that's my little secret. Magicians are entitled to their secrets. Plus, my mind's really itching to know how it's going. You feel it too, right? So itchy. <laughs> Not so itchy then, huh? Well, since you're so concerned, how would you like to serve as my temporary magician's assistant and help me investigate? Magician's assistants? Oh, that sounds fun! Assistants are technically magicians, too! Also, it'll bring us one step closer to figuring out how that darn trick is done! Shall we go for it? The first thing we need to look into is who Caesar really was. If he truly was the Phantom Weasel, that means that the Weasel is dead, and whoever wrote this warning letter is just a copycat criminal. But if he wasn't the weasel, hmm, well, that'll make things more interesting. It would mean that the weasel lives and he's been laying low all this time in some corner of Fontaine. And if we're investigating Caesar, his fiance Gemma is a good place to start. Word is that she visits the cemetery often, so I asked Lynette to wait for her there. We should make a move. Let's go and rendezvous with Lynette. You took your time. Sorry. I bumped into the Traveler and Charlotte en route, and we ended up chatting for a while. It's been a while, Lynette. We're working as Lenny's temporary assistants in the investigation of the Phantom Weasel. Thank you. It's good to have you helping. So, what's the situation? Have you seen Gemma? Nope. I've been here a while, and she still hasn't shown up. How bizarre. Maybe it was bad intel. Well, we won't get anywhere by standing around waiting. Traveler, Paimon, let's go ask around. Excuse me, good sir. Do you by any chance know a Gemma? Gemma? You mean Caesar's fiance? Sure I do. What's this about? I'm just trying to get a hold of her because I need her help with something. I heard she comes here a lot. Yeah, she does. <sighs> Poor thing. It's no secret why either. She's heartsick. Ever since Caesar passed away, she's been coming here once every week to clean his grave. 
Often, she just sits there in front of his headstone, lost in thought. Sometimes she talks to herself. I asked her what she was doing once. She said she wanted to speak to him again. She knows he's gone and can't hear her from the grave, but she just likes to spend time there, telling her fiancé all about how her life is going. And she's been doing this ever since Caesar passed away? Oh, so ten years. Wow, their love must have been really strong. I'll bet. Caesar's reputation fell apart after his identity was revealed, so no one else visits his grave. Gemma's the only one who still thinks about him after all these years. I don't know if the mind lives on in the waters after death, but if it does, I'm sure Caesar must be grateful to have someone who remembers him fondly. If I'm honest, I think this is all so unfair to poor Gemma. Her fiancé was a low-life crook. He doesn't deserve someone like her. Anyway, all of that said, she's running later than usual today. Normally, she'd be sitting in front of his grave by now. I wonder if she's okay. Well, that's everything I know, I'm afraid. You might have more luck asking some other people. All right, well, thanks for sharing all of this with us. We'll keep asking around. You're welcome. I just hope she'll be able to move on one day. Did you hear the news? They're saying the Phantom Weasel's back. You're kidding. Wait, isn't he dead? I don't know anymore. All sorts of news flying around nowadays. I can never tell what's true and what isn't. But what if, just hypothetically, I mean, what if this weasel's the real deal and Caesar was framed? Called it. Seriously, ten years ago on the day it all went down, I said to myself, you know what? This guy's been set up. The Caesar I knew was a good guy. He gave balloons to children on the street for Pete's sake. What, are we supposed to believe that he was a balloon thief or something? Give me a break. Oh, please. Weren't you the one cursing his name to high heaven when the police announced the news? You were all, oh, that gosh darn lousy son of a, oh, you think you know a guy, or words to that effect. Wait, did I say that? Hmm, I don't seem to recall. Hello there. Sorry for disturbing you, but I couldn't help but notice you were discussing the Phantom Weasel. We're actually quite interested in this topic as well, but we're struggling to get to the bottom of it. Do you think you could spare a moment to tell us a little bit about Caesar? You've come to the right people. Yep, I was there. Back when Caesar used to perform magic tricks on the street. He was a great magician. The best trick I ever saw him do was pop a transparent balloon, only for a whole bunch of doves to fly out from the inside. I was right up close and didn't blink or look away once. But for the life of me, I still don't have the faintest clue how he pulled it off. Really incredible stuff. I saw him perform too. He always used to bring some gifts along for the kids who came to watch his show, and he'd hand them out after he was done. Sometimes, he even got the kids to write their wishes down, and then he'd make the items on the wish list appear in his next show. Huh. He doesn't sound like such a bad guy. But after he died, there were also rumors that he used the wish list to find out what was precious to people, with the intent to steal it later. As I'm sure you know, the Phantom Weasel would steal just about anything from anyone. Whatever the case, now that the weasel is back, Caesar's become a hot topic once more. I bet Gemma must be pleased. If Caesar's name gets cleared, maybe it'll finally give her some solace after all this time. Oh, speak of the devil. That's her over there. If you've got any more questions about Caesar, she's definitely the one to ask. So that's Gemma. Uh, is it just Paimon, or does it look like something's wrong? Wait, it looks like she's injured. Come on, let's see if she's okay. Uh, hi there. You're Gemma, right?
Who's asking? Don't be afraid. We mean no harm. It looks like you're injured. How bad is it? Thanks for your concern. But you didn't answer my question. Who are you? And what do you want with me? My name is Linny, and this is my sister Lynette. the phantom weasel the weasel posted a warning letter this morning if he still lives that means that caesar was falsely accused you knew caesar better than anyone else so if you're willing we'd love to hear what you think about all this <sighs> Linny. i promise you can trust us we won't hurt you in fact we'll do all we can to keep you safe i i never believed that he was the weasel Huh. I suspected as much. Okay, so going back ten years, do you remember anything strange in the weeks leading up to the accident? Did Caesar have a falling out with anyone, for instance? No. Not that I know of. <laughs> Got it. All right. Sorry for disturbing you. If you don't have any more questions, please leave. I want to be alone with him. Judging by the look on her face, there's definitely something fishy about her. She's lying. She definitely knows something. That's fair. We're just a bunch of strangers who showed up and started questioning her about things that happened a whole decade ago. It makes sense that she'd be wary around us. In any case, I doubt we'll get any further here, so let's call it a day. Meet me outside Hotel de Boer tomorrow, and then we'll start the next step of our plan. Over here. Lynette's not joining us today? I've had her follow Gemma and see if we can make any inroads with her. They should be at a cafe right now. Still, I don't think that Gemma's likely to open up to us. <sighs> so, we need a contingency plan. Today, we'll be looking into a guy named Lorenzo, Caesar's former pupil and assistant. When Caesar passed away, all the stolen goods discovered in his home were confiscated and returned to their rightful owners. But Lorenzo was the only one privy to all his magic secrets, and he inherited his craft. Before long, Lorenzo was the next big magician in town, his fame surpassing even that of his master, and it made him very wealthy. He's since left the magic scene, though, and these days, he's a wealthy businessman with his fingers in a lot of different pies. I had to pull a lot of strings, but I managed to get him to agree to a couple of drinks with me. Be warned, though, I hear he's got a hair-triggered temper. We'd best be careful. Neglected to mention that you were bringing two other people with you. My apologies. These two are my assistants. When they heard that I was meeting with the former magic maestro himself, they begged and pleaded with me to bring them along. Um, and if it's no trouble, a couple of autographs would really make their day. Oh, forget the pleasantries. Just sit. Get a load of this guy. Forget the pleasantries, he says, but he looks pretty happy about Linny stroking his ego. I only agreed to meet since we're both magicians. 
Do me a favor and cut to the chase. I have more important things to do than drinking. Much obliged, sir. As it happens, the matter I want to address is also related to magic. Yesterday morning, a warning letter from the Phantom Weasel appeared on the entrance to the Opera House. He claims to be planning something for the same evening that I'm scheduled to do a magic show there. As such, I believe that I may well be his target. I have to get to the bottom of this to ensure that my show can go ahead as planned. Naturally, any investigation into the Weasel starts with a few questions about Caesar, who... What is there to investigate? Caesar was the Weasel and he's been dead for ten years. So what if some sick creep thought it'd be funny to write a warning letter? It changes nothing. Are you trying to tell me you actually bought it? Please, sir, no need to get so worked up. I do concede that a copycat is but one possibility. Possibility? It's a fact, Linny. Look, my patience is limited, so listen carefully while I'm still willing to put up with you. The weasel is dead. Period. Everyone knows that, so do yourself a favor and quit this investigation. It'll lead you nowhere. Look, if this affects your magic show in any way, I will personally compensate you for any losses. Oh, sir, I'm honored, really. But this isn't about finances for me. My pride as a magician is what's at stake here, Lorenzo. Copycat or not, this person has thrown me the gauntlet, and I must meet their challenge head on. Your pride? <laughs> Don't mince words with me, boy. Just tell me what exactly are you seeking to do. I want to find out the Phantom Weasel's true identity. I have to know for myself what really happened ten years ago. What would that accomplish? And what do the events of ten years ago have to do with you, anyway? Look, you of all people should know that a magician never reveals their secrets. And in any case, dead men don't talk. So if you really care about your magician's pride, then you'll forget about Caesar and move on. Uh-oh. Uh. Uh-oh. This is getting awkward. Lorenzo? Is that? Oh, it is you! <laughs> I know that big, uh, booming voice anywhere. <laughs> What's up, my man? Wanna grab a drink with me? Another day, I'm busy. Oh, come on! You can't be all business all the time. Do you know what they say? Live fast, die young. <laughs> You gotta learn how to kick back and relax once in a while. If I wanted your life advice, I'd ask for it. Now get out of my face and go be drunk somewhere else. Sorry, my good sir. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Oh, hey. Um, Edmondo. He and I are business pals. We work together a bunch of times. This is your first time meeting him? Oh, he's always like this. Foul mouth and hard nose. Never heard a kind word out of this guy the whole time I've known him. Uh, and he wonders why he can't get a girlfriend despite being, what, pushing 40, 30 something? Anyway, point is, a lot older than when he first got rejected by the girl he was into. And he's still into, from what I hear, Shut up and get out of my face. Another word out of you and you can forget about doing business with me ever again. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> uh, sorry, I may have had a little too much to drink. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave. Don't work too hard. <laughs> I think it's high time I made a move as well. If you really want to investigate this, Linny, be my guest. But if nothing good comes of it, don't say I didn't warn you. Well, that fell to pieces in a rather spectacular fashion. Any thoughts? you for your losses why would someone you just met make an offer like that he's got to be hiding something and not like Gemma she was a little suspicious but this guy's definitely covering something up I think so too 
We need to look into Lorenzo more closely. That guy Edmondo seems to know a thing or two about him. He only just left. Let's see if we can catch up with him. <laughs> you okay there? Uh, who are you? Oh, it's you guys. Don't worry about me. I must have had one too many. Uh, I just need to ride it out. <laughs> I said way too much back there, didn't I? Yeah, I nearly talked myself into complete financial ruin. <laughs> Note to self, no more drunken chats when Lorenzo's around. So, he was serious about threatening to cut you off? Ugh, time I knew he was a bad egg. Hey, 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 just keep your voice down. Don't go prying into Lorenzo's personal affairs. <laughs> bad things happen to people who ask too many questions. I'll make an enemy out of him. What kind of bad things? Don't even ask. I'm sorry, uh, I'm gonna have to cut this conversation short. I'm not crossing that line again. And take it from me, trouble with Lorenzo is one thing you don't need in your life. There's some flare up back there. I don't know what you said to him, but clearly it touched a nerve. That's not a good sign. You're, you're too young for this. Don't get in over your head. I'm leaving. being watched someone was listening in to our whole conversation don't say anything and don't look back any altercation in the city will attract the guards we better take this elsewhere You followed us a long way. Why don't you come out and introduce yourselves? So you're Linny. And where's your sister? Ain't she with you today? Save us the trouble and go fetch her for us. Let's not drag this out. Paimon doesn't like the tone of your voice, mister. Who sent you, huh? Save your questions, missy. You ain't gonna need answers where you're going. Capiche? <sighs> Looks like we can't avoid this fight. Now, I'm not the strongest fighter, so I hope you're ready to back me up. Don't worry, we got this! An oversight on my part. <laughs> not now. Bow your head. Curses. Tougher than we thought. V 
Vision wielders are always trouble. Intimidation ain't gonna work like it did on the lady. Come on, let's scram! Hey, wise guys! We ain't through with you yet! Oh, they got away! <sighs> did you catch what they said just before they left? Something about intimidating someone else. Sounds like they just wanted to rough us up as a scare tactic, and they've already done it to someone else, but who? You're right. She was injured when we saw her yesterday, and she acted like she had something to hide. Maybe she was too scared to tell us the truth because those guys had threatened her. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, she should be more willing to open up to us once she learns that those thugs won't be bothering her anymore. Let's head back to the cafe and see if we can get any information from her. Gemma? You again. What is it this time? We just ran into the men who've been threatening you, and... We gave them a taste of their own medicine! So... You can relax now. We're here to protect you! What? Why? I didn't tell you anything. Why would they come after you? <laughs> Sounds like they're no strangers to you. That's putting it mildly. I know them all too well. And I hate them with every fiber of my being. It's been ten long years. And still every time I try to look into Caesar's death, they show up and warn me not to do anything stupid. How do I know I can trust you? Do you really think you can get to the bottom of it all? And why are you doing this? I'm afraid I can't reveal all the details just yet, but I can promise you this. I will expose the Phantom Weasel's true identity. Because you see, this is a personal matter of the utmost importance. I give you my word. Trust me. Okay. How can I help you? I've heard that Caesar used to have a magic workshop where he kept a lot of his personal effects. If possible, I'd like to take a look at them. Do you know where it is? The Fleuve Sonde. But the place was sealed up by the police after his death, and no one's been there since. I also know that the Fleuve Sonde is dangerous territory, and lots of hostile groups lurking around. If you're serious about going there, please be careful. Understood. Lynette, you stay here and take care of Gemma. Don't let her come to harm. <sighs> Got it. But if I'm staying here, I'm ordering dessert. I mean, bon appetit, but stay sharp, too. They're likely to come for you while I'm away. Okay. All right. Power saving mode off. I'll start taking this more seriously now.
Gemma gave us the right location, then the workshop should be right nearby. Oh, looks like these boxes are blocking the entrance. Let's shift them away first. There we go. It should be just down here. Caesar's workshop. Hmm. Nothing suspicious here, just normal magic props. Let's head in further. <laughs> what was that? Oh. Is this one of Caesar's gadgets? Uh, guess we must have triggered some sort of device. Right here. Emerge. Right here. Settle down. <clears throat> Whoa. Look. The doll in the box is glowing. There's something written on the card on this doll. Closer look. Boxes are moving. What do we do? One of them looks different from the rest. 
Let's investigate. Got it. We're supposed to find the box that lit up at the start, right? There should be another wish list inside. Hmm. Let's keep trying. weird have we reached the end already there's nothing here uh, maybe this was a wasted trip this place seems a little too ordinary for a magician's workshop there's a distinct lack of mystery we've triggered quite a few devices on the way here hmm. I'm starting to wonder whether Caesar built this whole place as one big, elaborate magic contraption. If so, then there must be more to this place than meets the eye. Maybe a hidden room somewhere. Aha! If I just move this book, then hopefully... and... I'm a magician, too, and apparently great minds really do think alike. Looks pretty big inside. Let's head in and take a look around. Show them.
just looks familiar somehow. Let me check this out for a second while you guys go on ahead. If anyone makes a major discovery, let's rendezvous here. Case is full of Caesar's own notes. He wrote a lot about the principles of magic. Whew. Much too advanced to pie mine. <gasps> hey, look! Is that Caesar's diary on the table? This book's thick as a brick! Let's take a peek inside it, shall we? At one of my shows a few days ago, a child asked me how I pulled candy out of my hat. As a joke, I told the kid that the hat has a built-in wish-granting machine. Next thing I know, today a whole bunch of kids were pestering me to pull all sorts of things out of the hat. So I told them another white lie. The machine needs time to power up. But in the meantime, you can write your wishes down. Well, they took me up on that offer. Enthusiastically. As I write this, I've only just got back from running around all over town. Buying the things they wanted. Boy, are my legs sore. I wound up saving very little this month. But that's not a major issue. I now have a bigger problem. How am I going to hide all these things inside my hat? Two children came to talk to me after today's show. I don't know why they were out on their own. They looked much too young to be unsupervised. I do hope they got home safely. Anyway, they said that they wanted me to teach them how to do magic. It's not uncommon for children to ask this, of course, but I've never seen any of them as serious about it as these two. I told them that learning magic is very hard work, but that didn't faze them at all. It's like they already knew. They seemed so committed. I couldn't turn them down. Seems like something's bothering Lorenzo lately, but he won't open up to me about it. Surely he's not upset that I agreed to teach those two children. I'll have to talk him around. 
I have a good feeling about those kids. They're naturally talented, and it seems like they're not new to the world of magic. They have all sorts of fantastic ideas. All I'm really doing is helping them develop a more professional standard training plan. They wanted to call me master, but I told them they absolutely mustn't. Any magician worth their salt could have taught them what I have. They're the geniuses here. Compared to them, I don't deserve to be called any sort of master. With time, I have no doubt that they could become far greater magicians than I. My only concern is why they're so mature for their age. I fear they've had to grow up too fast. I don't dare to imagine what they must have been through. Gemma thinks so too. She doesn't like being around them. Says that their eyes are too piercing. They don't bother me, but then again, I've never been the sharpest tool in the shed. It's nearly time for me to go on tour. I asked the two kids if they'd like to come with me, but they shook their heads. I once overheard them talking about their father and their mission. Sounds like their parents have other plans for them. I guess we'll be parting ways soon. It's only been ten days since I first met them, but I think that I've gotten a feel for their personalities now. They're very tough, but also very cautious, and they trust no one but each other. This, I fear, is not a good habit to have. They hide things from me too. For example, when I asked them where they lived and why they wanted to learn magic, they lied. That's the thing about children. Whenever they're trying to cover something up, it always shows somehow. I can sense that their lives have been hard, possibly even dangerous too. They're not like other children. It's a shame that I can't do more to help them. After thinking things over, I decided to tell them a bit about how I see the world. It's full of lies and falsehoods, and that is why we must find our own truth. P.S. I hope they won't find my nagging annoying. Children are so opinionated nowadays. Will it do them more harm than good for someone they've only known 10 days to lecture them like that? P.P.S. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Children aren't interested in grand philosophies. It probably just went in one ear and out the other. I bet they've already forgotten every word I said. Oh, Caesar, Caesar. Just mind your own business next time. Magic geniuses with a father and a mission, huh? Sounds a lot like he was writing about Linny and Lynette, don't you think? <gasps> so did they meet Caesar when they were kids? Let's go ask Linny! Hold that thought. As I expected, there's a lot of fishy things going on in this place. Fishy? Uh-oh, what have you found? All in good time. Before we go over our new leads, I want to tell you how a high-altitude escape is performed. First, the magician slots themselves into a magic box in full view of the audience. The box is then suspended high in the air, and a short while later, the base automatically opens. At this point, a dummy will fall out of the box, but it looks real enough to grab the audience's attention, and they start wailing and screaming. 
Meanwhile, the real magician, who has by now blended into the crowd, waits for a good moment to make their appearance and put on a hysterical performance. Oh no! Is that me? Did I just fall to my death? Very vivid description. Paimon can really picture it. And then what? The audience's gaze then turns to the magician, and by the time they realize what's happened, the dummy has vanished. As if everything that just happened was some sort of shared illusion. Of course, that's just how I think the process should work, theoretically speaking. The inventor of this trick never performed it successfully. When the box opened, Caesar was the one who fell out, and not the dummy. He fell right to the ground from the highest point of the Opera House. No one could hope to survive that fall. Not without a vision, at least. And no one else has ever attempted this trick since. My understanding of how it works is just based on what I could gather from his notes and the relevant gadgets here in his workshop. So Caesar's famous high-altitude escape has never been done, huh? Carmen was about to say how cool it would have been to see it in person, but... If it's that dangerous, it's probably for the best that no one else tries to do it. Wait a second. So if the dummy's supposed to drop out of the box, then where does the real magician go? How does he get out? Glad you asked. That brings us to the secret of said box. This box right here is the one that Caesar constructed himself to use in the performance. And it's not as simple as it looks. Inside, there's a device that only the magician himself would know about. Once the magician's inside, and the box is lifted up into the air, the audience's view of the box is fixed at a certain angle. From where they're standing, they have a clear view of the front, sides, and bottom, but the back and the top are now no longer visible. At this point, the magician presses a button inside the box, opening a secret door out of view. He then escapes through this trap door onto the Opera House roof, waits for the dummy to fall and distract the audience, and quietly returns to ground level. That's way simpler than Paimon imagined. Even Paimon could probably do it. <laughs> well, there's a little more to it than that, of course. The hardest part of this trick is controlling the audience's mood and reactions. That takes an exceptional degree of showmanship. There's the falling dummy, the miraculous reappearance, the pompous performing. Maybe the magician would even have themselves tied up before it begins to strengthen the impression that there's no escape. Many days and nights of careful research and painstaking practice would have gone into this, all culminating in a performance just a few minutes long, but one that still manages to transform the shock and grief of a tragic accident to the joy and laughter of a mesmerizing magic trick. Caesar was a highly accomplished magician. But unfortunately, even he didn't manage to pull it off. So, how did it go so wrong? You said you found some fishy stuff here. Have you figured out what really happened? I can make a pretty good guess. I looked into the case files. The magic box Caesar was using at the time of his death had the secret button I mentioned positioned on the right-hand side. And, sure enough, he always used his right hand as his dominant hand in public. Okay. Nothing suspicious there. But here's the strange thing. Most of the devices in this workshop have the mechanism on the left-hand side, including this box right here. Which leads me to believe that Caesar was, in fact, left-handed. Because a magician can't afford to have their most basic habits stand out too much. People naturally focus their attention on the most important details of the task or situation at hand. But a magician needs to be able to redirect an audience's attention at will, so as to avoid arousing their suspicion. The essence of magic is getting people to believe a lie. If even the truth raises eyebrows, the falsehoods become all the more difficult to mask. And so... Caesar trained himself to use his right hand to align with his audience's expectations. Great magic always requires sacrifices. 
But in his most stressful and nerve-wracking moments, and when no one was watching, Reflex would kick in and he'd use his left hand. That's why he set his gadgets with the mechanism on his left. Exactly. I think that's likely what happened. Caesar would have been under a lot of time pressure during the escape. He'd have had mere seconds to open the hidden compartment, retrieve the dummy, then open the secret door and make a swift escape. But I'm sure he was confident. He would have rehearsed countless times to the point where it was second nature. He'd barely need to think about what he was doing because muscle memory would guide him through. So he opened the compartment, took out the dummy, checked everything was in order, and then went to leave. With his left hand, he reached for the button, and suddenly, his heart skipped a beat. It wasn't there. Much like when you reach for your keys but find your pocket empty, his mind needed a moment to process what was going on. Instinctively, his left hand would keep feeling around for the missing button, maybe for another second or two, until the bottom of the box gave way. With the stakes being as high as they were, just a two-second delay cost him everything. The authorities would find nothing suspicious and conclude that his death was due to his own error. In reality, someone switched the boxes! And they did it to murder him! But how would they be able to make the switch without being noticed? That would be difficult to pull off, no? It would have to have been someone who knew that he was left-handed, and who could move his props around without arousing suspicion. Someone who was always by his side. Isn't that right, Lorenzo? You just couldn't let sleeping dogs lie, could you? There's not a lot of people who'd go to all this trouble for some magician who died ten years ago. I didn't want to have to do this, you know. Silencing you the hard way just creates more problems for me to deal with. But I gave you your chance. I hoped you'd do what's good for you and back off like the lady, but... You disappoint me. You mean Gemma? So you are the one who's been threatening her! Yes, although however stubborn she might be, she was never much of a liability. But you people... You never even knew him, but for some reason you just wouldn't drop it. Which is why you can't leave this place alive. Take them out and make it quick. Not now. Come on out. Right now. Silence! The tide is beckoning. Tougher than you look. Had enough yet, Lorenzo? Your cronies can't help you now. I think it's high time you started talking. And what I'd really like to know is why did you murder Caesar? <sighs> if I had a mora for every time you said that man's name. Of course, you idolized Caesar. Everyone else did. But I was the real genius magician. Me! He was just an amateur who did cheap tricks for gullible children. I was the one who made magic into the fine art it is today. The aristocrats doffed their hats to me! So it was jealousy. <laughs> jealousy. Hatred, more like. I hated Caesar. All he cared about was his magic. He lived and breathed it. He poured everything into his street performances and his stupid tours like it was just a hobby to him. Never bothering to think about Mora. What sort of fool devotes their life to the art of deception and never has a Mora to show for it? But the people loved him, didn't they? Oh, how they looked up to him. No one gave me a second look. All I ever heard was, Oh, your master's amazing, isn't he? 
Amazing. Yeah, so amazing that he was completely broke. Every other apprentice was living it up at their master's expense, but no, not me. I put in all the work, mastered all the skills, and it brought me nothing more than the life I already had. He forbade me from using magic to trick people out of their mora. There was nothing he hated more than that. And with his reputation in Fontaine, it was too risky for me to go it alone. As long as he was alive, if I dabbled in my own brand of money-making magic, he would expose me, and it would destroy me. I had to kill him. There was no other way. He had to go. <laughs> and this was your only motive? It was reason enough. What other motive would I need? Well, I was under the impression that there might have been other factors at play. For instance, maybe you were in love with Gemma, but she was engaged to Caesar. In love with Gemma? D don't be ridiculous. Guess I was wrong about that then. <laughs> Next question. Are you the Phantom Weasel? I am. Caesar was so strict with me. He insisted that his way was the right way. That the sole purpose of magic was to bring joy to the world. I never bought into any of that. I was more interested in the practical value of magic. Sure enough, it helped me fill my pockets with all kinds of valuable treasures. Oh, yeah! Charlotte told us that the weasel would steal whatever people valued, no matter how much it was worth. That's just how it looked from the outside. What would any thief want with second-rate loot? I've only ever targeted high-value items. I stole cheap things as a way of practicing my craft. It was other people's overactive imaginations that conjured up the preposterous image they then dubbed the Phantom Weasel. So, that's the story, huh? Well, I hope you're ready to tell it all over again during your trial. What choice do I have? You're a pack of wolves, and you've got me between your jaws. You've seen what's here, and my last-ditch effort to stop it getting out has failed. What else can I do? So be it. I've enjoyed power and wealth for the last ten years, the likes of which Caesar could never give me. I wouldn't choose for things to end this way, but I regret nothing. Very well. In that case, I'll contact the guards. Traveler, Paimon, keep an eye on Lorenzo for me. I'll meet you just outside the workshop when I'm back. At least I can finally stop looking over my shoulder now. Lumi has told me the whole story. Lorenzo, do you confess to the murder of Caesar and to framing him for the Phantom Weasel's crimes? Hmm. <laughs> Look who's finally developed a conscience. What kind of disciple murders their own master? I hope it was worth it. Because there'll be hell to pay. like it's all over. What should we do next, Lenny? Should we start preparing for your show? Huh, let me think. Let's rendezvous with Lynette and Gemma first. With Lorenzo in custody, Gemma will no longer have to fear for her safety. Good point! We should go tell Gemma the good news right away! It'll 
give her some peace of mind for sure. You're back. You were so quick. I've only just finished my third dessert. Your third? Lynette, come on. We've talked about this. Everything in moderation. You're not gonna have any room left for dinner now. That's fine. I'll shift to exercise mode and jog off the excess sugar. That's besides the point. <sighs> well, it's done now. But try to eat a more balanced diet in the future. <sighs> Point taken. Did everything go okay? Of course! Lorenzo was no match for us. The guards are taking him into custody as we speak. Gosh, that's amazing. I'm sorry, I still didn't know if I could trust you. But now it seems I can. I had my suspicions about Lorenzo, but I... to trust strangers in your position, too. But you don't need to be scared anymore. Everything's gonna be okay. Sorry. Sorry. My emotions are all over the place right now. I've been waiting for this day to come for so long. I always wanted to report Lorenzo. He took all of Caesar's property, which I found suspicious. But I had people watching me all the time so I couldn't risk looking into it. I was so afraid. I was scared he'd do something terrible to me. And then no one would be left to visit Caesar's grave. So I never had the courage to speak out. Thank you all. Truly. Thank you so much. Thank you all for clearing Caesar's name. I never would have guessed that Lorenzo was the real phantom weasel. He never showed any signs that there were problems between him and Caesar in public. From the outside, it looked like they got along great. Ugh, and to think that Lowlife's been living life to the fullest all this time while Caesar's name was getting dragged through the mud. It's a travesty. At least his soul can finally rest in peace now, thanks to your efforts. I'd realized before it was too late. <sighs> Don't blame yourself, Gemma. This isn't your fault. Yeah, you still have the rest of your life to live. Caesar wouldn't want to see you spending it feeling guilty. Hmm. Cheer up, Gemma. My brother's doing a magic show at the Opera House tomorrow evening. Would you like to come along? It might raise your spirits. This show will be a special one. We're holding it in Caesar's honor. In Caesar's honor? Really? Oh, thank you. I'll be there. Great. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Traveler, Paimon, don't be late. Don't worry. We'll be there. No way are we gonna miss out on a free magic show. Wait, Paimon feels like we're forgetting something. <gasps> oh yeah, Caesar's diary! We never found out if the two kids Caesar taught magic to were Linny and Lynette or not. Uh, Linny changed the topic back in the workshop, so we didn't get a chance to bring it up. Oh well, guess we'll just have to ask Linny tomorrow evening. <laughs>
Not this time. My brother's going solo today. So, I'll be watching with you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everybody's ready because the show is about to begin. The great magician Linny has prepared a spectacular show for us all tonight, concluding with an all-new grand finale that no audience has ever seen before. Thank you all so much for coming. Now, prepare to join me on a journey through the mystical and miraculous. <sighs> Exciting stuff, isn't it? Yes, it's just... It, it reminds me of him. No wonder. Caesar was a famous magician too. So, how did you two first meet, Gemma? Hmm? Well, I was out on the street once, and I saw him performing for little children. Children love magic, because they're willing to believe in things that can't be rationally explained. Caesar had this amazing way of bringing them into a dreamlike world. And somehow, I felt drawn to him too. So, I went up and asked him to do a trick for me. It was with a flower. He took it in his hand, snapped his fingers, and it magically appeared on my head. <laughs> I was so happy that day. No one had ever given me a flower before that. Oh, that's so cute! Uh, actually, now that you mention it, Lenny's done that one before. Is that right? Then I suppose he's a romantic at heart, just like Caesar. So let's treasure the time we have with him. After all, you never know when the people dearest to you might be gone. That's right. It's all over now. Um, Paimon doesn't really know how to comfort you, but at the very least, no one's going to be intimidating you from now on. You can breathe easy at last, right? Right. Yes, you can breathe easy now, Phantom Weasel. See? Even Lynette says... Wait, what? The Phantom Weasel? Lorenzo escaped? Where is he? Uh, what do you mean, Phantom Weasel? As Lenny once said, a performer's job is to commit fully to their role and put on a flawless performance for their audience. But once the bag of tricks is empty and the curtain falls, it's time to end the show. The spotlight is no place for someone with no more cards up their sleeve. It's been ten years, Gemma. Aren't you tired of the grieving widow act? I think it's time to put an end to it. What are you talking about? Uh, Paimon doesn't like this riddle. Traveler Paimon doesn't like where this is going. Come on, say something! <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all enjoying the performance so far. There will now be a brief intermission, after which Linny will perform the most electrifying act of tonight's show, the one we've all been waiting for. The final performance will take place outside of the Opera House, so please make your way outside in a calm and orderly fashion. The Phantom Weasel never did like public places, did they? Don't worry, this place will be quiet soon. Let's talk somewhere else for now. Dear me, this is awkward, isn't it? And unfortunately, I'm all out of gadgets, so I'm afraid I can't do any tricks to liven up the mood. 
This is a big mistake for a magician to make. But thankfully, I do have a backup plan. Now, who wants to hear a story? Uh, Lenny? Don't we have more important things to address right now? Lenny accused Gemma of being the real Phantom Weasel a moment ago. Oh, what the heck's going on? All in good time. Magicians are good at guessing what people are thinking. I know the questions you want to ask. And as it happens, the story I'm about to tell might answer a few of them. Really? Well then, let's hear it! I'm dying of curiosity here! Let's go back to the very beginning. A decade ago, when the Phantom Weasel was terrorizing the Court of Fontaine, she never missed a target. Never left a trace, and no treasure was safe from her thieving hands. But as her infamy grew, so did the readiness of the police, and her opportunities to act became ever fewer. Every day, she ran the risk of being exposed for who she was. Of course, she could not simply take this lying down, and before long, she found her ticket to freedom. She would create a scapegoat, a false weasel to close the chapter on her behalf. After weighing her options, she set her sights on a renowned magician, Caesar. After all, magic and theft shared enough similarities for people to buy the story when the truth came out. So... so then what? Being the master deceiver she was, the weasel easily earned Caesar's trust. Now all that remained was to frame him for her countless crimes. But, as she was considering how to make her move, she noticed Caesar's aggrieved pupil, and a new thought entered her mind. Maybe I don't need to get my hands dirty after all. At her encouragement, Lorenzo tampered with Caesar's magic box, causing him to fall to his death. Afterwards, Lorenzo seized his master's property, and the weasel set about tarnishing Caesar's reputation. Two co-conspirators committed the perfect crime. I've got to hand it to you. You're both exceptional storytellers. It's enough to make even me wonder whether there was really another mastermind behind all this. Pulling the strings. But I just have one question. You seem to think that I am the villain in this tale. What's brought this on, Linny? Is it something that Lorenzo said? Don't worry. Lorenzo said nothing at all. But I never believed that he was the weasel, and in fact, my investigation only made me more certain of that. He was too forthcoming with his confession, as if there was something else he was trying to hide. How disappointing. So you'd sooner trust Lorenzo than me? Even without a shred of evidence? A magician is an expert at playing the audience to get the result they want. And I have no doubt that you, Gemma, are equally talented in this regard. With a little help from Lorenzo, you put on a very convincing performance. The lovesick fiancé, whose devotion to her betrothed is unshakable, even under threats of violence. Caesar was maligned and hated by all for ten years, but you? Everyone sympathized with your plight. Who would suspect for one second that the lovely young lady always seen weeping in front of Caesar's grave was actually the mastermind behind his demise? No, not that poor lady. Uh, perish the thought. Wait, so you mean the whole intimidation thing was just a hoax? Gemma and Lorenzo were both in on it? But why would Lorenzo agree to that? And why didn't he sell her out even at the end instead of admitting to being the weasel himself? Yes, why indeed. Hmm. Maybe Gemma herself could enlighten us on that question. Well, Linny, if you're so confident in your version of events, then I think the answer should be obvious. Having killed Caesar with his own hands, Lorenzo was plagued by overwhelming guilt. Revealing the Phantom Weasel's true identity would serve no purpose. But, if the Weasel remained free, then she could take care of Lorenzo's loved ones. An excellent answer. Though sadly, a little dull. Is that right? Well, don't let me bore you. 
If you'd care to change the topic to something more interesting, I'd be much obliged. As a matter of fact, there's one thing I'd really like to understand. Why would the real weasel have targeted things that only have value to other people? Could you shed any light on that? Of course. After all, we're just telling stories here, aren't we? If I had to guess, I would say that the real weasel must have had a terrible childhood. Left to fend for herself after her parents died young. Betrayed. Scorned. Beaten. She'd scrounge waste paper from garbage bins to draw on, using twigs and dirt for lack of ink and pen. She'd sew ugly ragdolls from whatever scrap material she could get her hands on. This was her only source of happiness in life. But it was all she needed, and she was content. Until the world decided that even this was too good for her. Once again, she was betrayed. And this time, everything was taken from her. She felt like life was a miry pit that dragged her further down the more she struggled to escape. At that tender age, she should have been happy. Instead, she stood in the shadows and watched with envy as all good things in the world passed her by. This was a fate too cruel for anyone to bear. Her pain became a breeding ground for dark thoughts. Thoughts which festered and grew into a twisted solution to her troubles. I detest the happiness of others, in all its forms alike. I will rob them of everything they hold to be good and true. And it will fill the void in my soul. That's some pretty heavy stuff. <laughs> now it all makes sense. Does this story satisfy you, Linny? Yes, it is quite to my tastes. Thank you for helping to clear up my confusion. Huh. That's right. What drove you to write that letter, Gemma? What were you trying to achieve there? Because without Dad, none of this would have ever come to life. She didn't write the letter. <sighs> After ten long years, I'd hoped that the Phantom Weasel would be consigned to the history books by now. <sighs> but it seems like someone still wasn't ready to let her finally be at peace. Linny. Or should I call you the Phantom Copycat now? You were the one who posted that letter outside the Opera House. But why? Very sharp, Phantom Weasel. Still as shrewd as ever. Well, no need for me to be coy about it. Our goal was to clear Caesar's name. The most straightforward way to change the public's impression of Caesar was to force the Weasel to show themselves. That's it? You had no other agenda? Of course we did. We made it quite clear in the letter, I believe. I shall take from you that which you hold most dear, just as you did to me ten years ago. Uh, ten years ago? You mean Caesar's death? You, you met him? Uh, wait. Oh, I get it. You were those two obnoxious kids! It's been so long, and you're all grown up now. I didn't recognize you. He taught you magic back then, didn't he? For, what, ten days or something? <laughs> and you went to all this trouble. Why? Because you feel like you still owe him something? We remember all our debts, however great or small. Ten years ago, Caesar's reputation was torn to shreds, and his legacy was thrown out. Ten years on, and no one cares what the truth is anymore. But we did not forget. And so we came to find you. And? What exactly did you take from me? I'm still standing, as you can see. Lorenzo has admitted to everything. I'm free. Free? <laughs> Do you really think so? 
Caesar once told me that even though the world is filled with lies and falsehoods, we must find our own truth. I think that applies to you too. Truth can take many forms. Prized possessions with nostalgic value, fervent hopes and dreams, and irreplaceable people. Life took many things from you, and those wounds never healed. When they ached unbearably in the dead of night, stealing became your way of numbing the pain. What are you trying to say? I'm saying that for the last ten years, you've been living a rather uneventful life. Perhaps that's because you found something other than a life of crime to fill the hole? Back to Lorenzo for a second. He murdered his own master, played along with your act, and took pains to make sure any suspicion would be directed towards him. But what did he have to gain from all that? He knew who you were and the things you'd done, and despite that, he was willing to give everything up for your sake. He's the reason that you haven't felt the compulsion to steal in all these years. You're more than just accomplices in murder. You're the only real friends each other has. So I think you know, deep down, that he is the only truth you have in your life. But that truth is gone now. And I guarantee you, you'll never see it again. <laughs> Congratulations on your freedom, Gemma. Your freedom will cost you dearly. From now on, You'll be all alone in a world full of lies and falsehoods. I do hope you'll be able to bear it. You've still got a long life ahead of you, after all. Gather round, one and all! The time has now come for the amazing Linny to perform his final act in tonight's show! I'm sure you're all wondering what he has planned for the grand finale. Well, wonder no more, for the answer is... A death-defying high-altitude escape. A high-altitude escape? I'm sure you all remember the magician Stephen. This was the very trick that led to his fatal fall, after which he was dubbed the Phantom Weasel. But we have now learned that Caesar was wrongly accused, and that the real Weasel has now confessed to their crime. Guess that's my cue to leave. I've been practicing this one for ages now, but I'm still a little nervous. Traveler, Paimon, I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. There may be a lot of people watching tonight, but you alone are my true witnesses. <laughs> Lenny, wait. You two hid a lot from Caesar. He went to his grave without ever knowing your secrets. So what about now? Are you an open book? Or are you still the same as ever? You don't have to tell lies to end up isolated and alone. <laughs> One day, you'll end up exactly where I am today. Maybe then you'll finally understand. You're wrong. I'm nothing like you. Lenny said, when you're ready, let's head outside and watch the show. But what about Gemma? She'll figure out what's best for her soon enough. Oh, and if you'd like to see Lenny after the show, you know where he'll be. The usual haunt.
Magic should be mysterious, surprising, and defy logic. Magic is hard work. Every single movement has to be practiced thousands of times. It's all right. We're used to that. We're sorry. You've taught us so much, but we can't tell you the whole truth. <sighs> it's okay. Do you still remember what I told you? This world is full of lies and falsehoods. I only hope that one day, you can find your own truth. Uh, what about you? Have you found your truth? Magic is my truth. I want to perform a magic trick so great that people will always think of me when they talk about it. For a magician, what greater honor could there be? Look! Behold! Linny is sealed inside the box. Will he manage to escape? Ten years ago, Caesar attempted this very trick, and it was at this precise moment that... Mysterious. Surprising. And logic defying. Isn't that right? This honor belongs to you, Caesar. I'm just sorry it's a little late. turned into flowers how could he possibly have done that how mysterious i didn't blink once he just vanished right in front of my eyes what a heart-stopping magic show this was really worth the trip caesar's name has finally been cleared and fontaine's new star magician linny has fulfilled a wish on his behalf oh i couldn't ask for a better grand finale it will make a great headline for the steambird tomorrow even if i do say so myself oh Looks like everyone really loved Linny's grand finale! Primark doesn't see Linny anywhere! Where'd he go? Uh, oh! Lynette said he'd be waiting for us at the... usual... haunt. But... um... Where is that? Oh! You mean the one where Caesar's buried? Yeah, that's probably it. The whole magic show kind of seemed like Linny's way of saying goodbye to Caesar. So it makes sense that that's where he'd be afterward. Alright, let's go look for him there. Paimon was scared to death when the chain broke. Paimon was sure something had gone horribly wrong. Magic is a performance art. A magician has to get creative to keep the audience on tenterhooks. That's our job. So I tweaked Caesar's original setup a little to keep it fresh. I was honestly a little nervous during the live performance. The thought of falling, suddenly feeling weightless, seeing the sky and the ground spinning and spinning. Sometimes, I can't help but wonder what Caesar thought in those final moments. Did he regret taking Gemma and Lorenzo on? Or... Did he believe that it was his own slip-up right until the end? You know, Paimon's been wanting to ask you 
about something ever since we were in Caesar's workshop. You learned magic from Caesar once, didn't you? When was that? After I joined the House of the Hearth. To be honest, Lynette and I had an agenda when we approached him. I told you about my past before, remember? As a young boy, I survived by secretly learning magic from street performers. I'd watch their tricks and try to figure out how they were done. But I quickly realized that observation alone could only get me so far. What I saw was the polished final performance, but the rigorous training they put in behind the scenes remained invisible to me. I needed to learn how to improve my sleight of hand, hone my misdirection skills, and make niftier props. We were gifted enough that we'd made some progress by ourselves, but without proper guidance from a professional magician, we quickly plateaued. So that's why you sought Caesar out? Yes. We figured there was no harm in asking, but it took us by surprise that he was so willing to teach us. In all, we only spent ten short days together, but he was very good to us. By contrast, we hid so many things from him. For instance, when he asked why I wanted to learn magic, I answered, it's my passion. But in truth, there was already a lot more to the story by then. After being taken in by an aristocrat for our magic talent, then betrayed soon after, this was no longer about me doing what I loved. What amazed me was how the lie escaped my lips even as I was hesitating over whether to tell him the truth. Trust is a beautiful thing. Sadly, I'd forgotten how to trust by then. Lenny. Still worried about the way I feel? <laughs> you really are a gentle soul, aren't you? But don't worry, I'm used to it now. From the mansions of the elite to the house of the hearth, lies and selfishness have followed me and Lynette everywhere we go. After Caesar went on tour, we became busy with our missions. The next we heard of him was that he'd fallen to his death and was now declared to be the Phantom Weasel. That night, I remembered his smile. But as I lay there, I didn't know what to say to him. To keep secrets is to put up walls. The longer you keep them up, the less you let people in. Then, one day, you look around and realize your life is like an empty auditorium after a show, full of seats once occupied by all the people who left. <sighs> but I guess that's the price we have to pay. You only realize how much someone really meant to you when you lose them completely. That's why I was so confident this would hurt Gemma. Because I felt it for myself. Yeah, cheer up, Lenny. We've had to say our fair share of goodbyes during our journey, too. But whatever happens, Paimon always believes in what tomorrow brings. Delicious food, fun toys, and the traveler by my side. Paimon just needs to focus on things like this and all the unhappy stuff goes right out the window. Um, you know, Traveler, doesn't that kind of make you Paimon's truth? Exactly. It's the same for me and Lynette. We are the truest thing each other has in the world and nothing can replace that. Life has taken plenty from us like it did from Gemma. But at least it left us with each other. That's what gave us the strength to get through the darkest days. That's why the darkness never consumed me and why it never will. Maybe we live in the shadows too, but we remember every precious ray of light that shines through. All right, time to lighten this conversation up a little. What did you think of the show tonight? Were you happy with it? It was amazing! Kaima just wishes we hadn't been so distracted with the Gemma situation. We spent most of our time in the Opera House just talking and pretty much missed the entire first half of the show. Um, Lenny, could you do just one more trick for us? Whoa, that's a bit of a tall order, I'm afraid. The show's just finished, so my sleeves are decidedly card-free right now. Aw, come on! Surely you can think of something. The Lenny Paimon knows can do anything if he puts his mind to it. 
Oh, all right then. I'll give it a go, but only because it's you. Watch closely. I have a flower in my hand. You liar! There's nothing in your hand! We ain't going along with this! Huh? My goodness, you're right! But I could have sworn I brought one here with me. Hmm. Okay, try this. Count down with me. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Now, have another look around. Maybe the flowers appeared somewhere else. Really? Let's see. Well, if you want to learn magic, you'll have to start by addressing me as teacher. Ugh. Fine! Please, teacher, please! <sighs> Since you asked so nicely, I'll share one little tip with you. Namely, the student of magic cannot solely rely on others being prepared to reveal their secrets. You have to observe, think, and find the answers for yourself. Is that it? Ah, look at the time. We shouldn't linger here too long. Thanks again for coming to see my show. I bid you both good night. I look forward to seeing you again. <sighs> All right, fine. See ya. Shall we head back down too? <laughs> Paimon can't wait to read the Steambird tomorrow. Paimon bets Linny and Caesar will be plastered all over it. Let's head to the Steambird's offices tomorrow morning and see what we can find out. Ad Astra Abyssosk. Ad Astra Abyssosk. Thank you for completing today's commissions. Here is your reward. I'm very sorry, Charlotte, but my sister and I are quite busy today. I'm afraid we'll have to decline this interview. Oh, please, Linny, I'll only take a moment of your time. If you would be so kind. Huh? What's happening here? I spent all night writing my piece about the Phantom Weasel, and it was going to go to print this morning. But just as dawn broke, I suddenly received news that Caesar's fiance, Gemma, had contacted the guards and confessed to having been the real Phantom Weasel all along. That was quick. <clears throat> hmm? Too late, bro. <laughs> that was quick, you say? It sounds like I've got some catching up to do. Please, fill me in. <laughs> Whoops. Aha! My instincts did not lead me astray. You do have something to hide. Gemma turning herself in must have something to do with Linny's performance last night. Maybe watching my high-altitude escape trick reminded her of a better time with Caesar, and she could no longer ignore the voice of her conscience. Huh. Okay, then. Wait, no, 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 there must be more to it. If that's all it took for her to have a change of heart, how did it take her ten whole years? Um, well... Oh, I remember now. You and Gemma were nowhere to be found after the show. What happened between you? Quickfire question. Where did you all go after the show? Oh, 
We went to the cemetery and Linny did a private magic trick just for us. Actually, glad you mentioned it, because that reminds Paimon, guess what? Linny started using rainbow roses in his tricks. <coughs> what? Hmm. I don't recall ever having received a rainbow rose from you myself. Is this supposed to mean that they're more important to you than your own sister? No, I, I just, uh... What the... What now? Oh, did Paimon say something wrong again? <laughs> this is getting pretty awkward. What do we do, Traveler? <sighs> Seems like this interview wasn't meant to be. Well, never mind. There's always next time. Forgive my persistence, but when there's explosive news waiting to be found, I can't turn away. The news about Gemma has already made waves, and I'll stop at nothing to get to the bottom of it all. Apparently, one of the things she said to the guards was that her final wish is to see Lorenzo one last time. Ah, oh, there's clearly a web of complicated relationships there. Can't blame me for being curious. All right, I guess I'll leave you to continue the rest of your conversation in peace. Bye for now. Um, Lynette? Paimon didn't mean to... <laughs> Don't worry, I wasn't angry. I was just trying to distract her. Oh, really? Oh, thank goodness. You scared Paimon there. Phew. You and me both, Paimon. You and me both. At least it did the job, right? Please, take good care of that rainbow rose. I'd be really upset if you lost it. 